How amazing is the amazing Spider-Man Lego set? Let's find out. Despite the somewhat simple nature of the model, you know, it's a Lego painting of sorts you can hang on a wall due to having the anger pieces in the back, the build ended up being far more challenging using lots of great building techniques I was not expecting to see at all. As I wasn't expecting to see such a big amount of basic bricks and pieces used at the early stages of the build process to make the frame of this whole thing. I assumed this was going to be similar to Lego art sets done in the past, that used lots of these 16x16 16 16 bricks for the base and frame, so I was really glad to be wrong because with the excessive use of specialized LEGO elements for products these days, sets like the Batcave or this amazing Spider-Man painting make me extremely happy because I feel like I'm building with that basic bucket of bricks I had as a kid all those years ago. Pure nostalgia. But basic bricks can't get you that far and so seeing lots of different bar, clips, rubber string and hose elements being used to create all of these spider webs surrounding Peter balanced things out a bit. If you get too close the effect is kinda lost since you see too much details the pieces have, but if you look at it from afar it works really well. Behind all of the webbing you'll see lots of round tiles used with several shades of green meant to replicate the band day dots technique used in comic book illustrations a few decades ago, something that can also be seen in the printed tile element down here with our hero's name. That together with the use of plain red, blue and black for the Spider-Man illustration so to speak, gives this whole thing the old school comics look, which was most likely the main source of inspiration to design this product. Spider-Man is the star of the show, obviously, and what makes it special I think is this feeling you get that he is about to to crawl out of the frame with the fingers and especially the mask sticking out of the build. The mask can be moved side to side slightly and you can somewhat adjust the fingers if you're hanging these on a wall, though placing these on a shelf or similar will force you to open the fingers on his left hand which doesn't look so good. You'd also need to lean these against something as the model is a bit front heavy and will fall if standing straight. The forced perspective works fine I think but once again better if if you look at it from a distance. Impressive with the use of just three colors, with black being extremely important for shades and helping define some of the body shapes. There's also some depth with layers of bricks and plates that separate the main body from the green background, not overly done like the Starry Night, not as minimal like the Kanagawa wave set, but just about right. The use of the three colors was enough to convey the spider icon on the back of Spider-Man's suit, with the use of a couple of different tiles and wedge plates, types of elements extensively used throughout the build to get the illustration just right, with this arm here being one of such examples. And while the build may look very straightforward up until this point, it's when we get to the shoulders and the left arm that the crazy building techniques shine. Actual math calculations must have been used to figure out the triangle measurements needed to have this massive shoulder assembly be legally placed at an angle without straight pressing the elements. Same with both sections of this arm here that just click into place in such a satisfying manner. Same goes for this uh, build here with a hole in the middle giving room to a Technic ball cup piece that together with the same piece placed at the shoulder sub build provide the necessary connection points for the ball joints on the back of the Spider-Man's mask assembly to be connected to the main structure. Which by the way was jam packed with ridiculous building techniques I've never seen before in any product I recall. Removing some of the printed tiles and other elements will get you a glimpse of what I'm talking about, so I had a lot more fun with this build than I ever hoped I would. Marvel sets are usually overpriced, thinking back on the Black Panther bust or the Hulk buster here, but the Amazing Spider-Man is hard to judge. At $200 for 2,100 pieces feels borderline okay, though this set has close to 300 of these small one by one round the tiles and similar elements that while not free to produce are cheaper than most. The set does have printed pieces, no stickers and a fair amount of big sized lego pieces like the 16x16 16 16 plates used for the background or the large sized regular bricks and plates used for the frame. So cost of production of big versus small elements evens itself out in the end but I still feel it should have
have been cheaper. You do get a surprisingly fun building experience out of this product as well as an amazing display piece. Not something I would hang on my living room like the Kanagawa Wave art set, but something that would fit right in in some kid's bedroom or somewhere in the house of a big comics or Spider-Man fan. The building instructions also give some cool insights about the model and the hero through the pages and there's audio tracks recorded by the model designer explaining the whole thing in detail in a step-by-step -step manner that I totally recommend you listening to while building this. Even though I really liked the Kanagawa Wave and considered it to be my favorite Lego art set ever, I think I'll take that back and say the Amazing Spider-Man is to me the best out of the two. The Captain America's shield set on the other hand is the complete opposite of the Amazing Spider-Man set in so many ways that I might even do a video about it soon, so keep an eye out for that and watch this one instead while you wait for it.